G'day everyone, welcome back to my little home machine shop. So today I'm going to be using my old Colchester lathe and uh, the tailstock and have a go at pushing this brooch through these cast flywheels. Now these are a couple of brooches that I bought off AliExpress. Um, they're just you know branded Chinese, high speed steel. Um, they've only got a cut for brooches so I wasn't go going to go out and buy an expensive set. I forget what I paid for the they were uh, relatively cheap. Unfortunately, it didn't come with a broaching sleeve, so I had to make one. Now, I didn't record this for this video. I did do a little bit of footage and put that on my Instagram and Facebook account. Um, if you want to have a look at that, feel free to go over there and check it out. Uh, they did come with the shims. Um, I bought two of these, as you can see here. I bought a 4mm brooch and a 5mm brooch. And they both came with a shim each and I'm quite surprised how easy it worked now I don't have an arbor press I don't even have a hydraulic press here at home so I thought how am I going to do it so I put this in the three door chuck and I'm covering this and I'll show you in a second uh, locked the lathe in a low gear so it wouldn't move and uh, made a pushing plug put in an old uh, drill chuck and just wound it through locked the tail stock just took my time and I was quite surprised at the results. It worked rather well. well I've got the flywheel uh, in the little Pratt Bernard chuck here on the Colchester lathe. Uh, you can see I jaw two and three up the top at 120 degrees. So this is the little broaching sleeve that I made um, on my mill and on the lathe. And that goes in here like so. Now this is my high speed steel brooch that I bought from AliExpress. Um, I've only got to do four of these. If I was, you know, if I was going to do a lot more, I'd, I'd buy a better quality one, but this is fine. Now, because I don't have an arbor press, I'm just going to be using the tail stock here. Now I've got my old drill chuck. This is an old one that I don't use anymore and it's, it's been worse for wear. You've got to remember this old Colchester was a school lathe, came from a high school. It's an Imperial model, so it's probably around the seventies early 80s something like that I've made a push plug that goes inside of the chuck and just in case you're not following me there's my good Morse taper 3 chuck okay righto in we go now the camera may jump a little bit here because I've got the camera attached to the tail stock okay so I'll bring up a bit closer Right, I've repositioned the camera and uh, off camera there you probably saw the parting off tool sitting over here and you're probably screaming at me down the camera going get rid of it before you cut yourself and uh, as luck would have it that's exactly what I did bloody sharp tools here we go we'll start pushing on that brooch now I've got the lathe locked in the lowest gear possible Just backing off every now and then. Ready for a second push. Now you might be asking why I'm using cutting oil or fluid like that. You've got to remember this is cast. Cast contains graphite and graphite means it's self-lubricating. There we go. Time to put a spacer in. I'll try and give you a bit of a longer shot here. Here we go again. Got the uh, 0.7mm shim in there now. Now a good little tip here is as you're broaching, every now and then back off, take the pressure off it. That way then you're not driving it on an angle. Take a bit of load off it. Right, I've run out of strokes. One more time. You can see that push plug coming in handy. 
all the way through. Right, I've got up to the 0.9 shim now. Now I'm looking for that number. I've just used the engineer's black book to obtain the depth of that key. You see there I had to back off, it was starting to bend on me. Right, I've doubled up with both shims now. And I'll start working my way through there, backing off. I'm starting to hear it cut. It's doable, it's not easy using the tailstock. I do feel a fair bit of pressure. And we're done. Well, there's my brooch keyway in the flywheel. Um, I've got the key fitted here. It's a 5x5mm five five bit of key still. Um, I've done the calculations. I should have about 0.1 clearance here, which is pretty close to what the black book specifies. I'll put a little bit of uh, oil on this before I assemble it. adjust the camera so you guys can see and hopefully that should slide on beautiful I don't want to push it too hard just yet because uh, I've got to muck around with the camshaft flywheel on now I've got my camshaft located down there as well um, you can see that it's a very good fit I don't know how well you can see in there I'll try and zoom in a little bit So, very snug on there. So what I'm going to do now, and I probably should have done this when I made the cranks, I'm going to set this up on my mill and define the centre and drill and tap. Now the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't want to rely on a grub screw to hold this flywheel on. It's got a fair bit of weight in it. I think it's about 2.5 kilos from memory. So I've made up this little retaining washer. And what it will do, it will pop inside there like a little button and just give me a slight little bit of clearance to stop that flywheel rubbing on the outer race. Right, oh, here's my work holding method to hold that <laughs> that motor in situ there and clamp up on it. You can see I've got these round uh, aluminium tubes up under there and these clamps. Um, I found Santa dropped in with my dial indicator and found the center of the work. So let's center drill, well spot drill, drill and tap. There's my spot. This is my 4.2 millimeter drill bit. I'll be tapping this M5 by 0.8 pitch. Go about 12 millimeters deep. I'm just looking at the increments on the quill lever. It's not super critical. I'm down at 10 mil. 11, 12, 12 and a half, half an inch. Give it a courtesy flush. This is a spiral flute tap that I predominantly use on my CNC. I like using the spiral flute taps as it pulls the swarf up out of the job. Doesn't shove it down in the hole. So what I'll do here, I'll start it up and then just uh, turn it off. And uh, hand feed it by hand. Hopefully I don't snap the tap. Look at that, like a hot knife through butter. Get a tap wrench up its bass now and give it a bit of a tap. Just uh, sneaking up on that now. I know I'm coming close to bottom. I don't want to force it too much and snap the bass that off in there. Oh, there we are. I can feel that. That should come out by hand. Get my hand out of the way of the camera. Alright, bit of a vacuum and a blow. Actually, I'll just blow this.
All right, I'll bring it back on over to the bench. Um, so as you know, I'm making four of these. This is the second one I'm currently on. And uh, yeah, it's look, it's spinning not too bad here. You know, there's a little bit of out of concentric, but it's not that bad considering that that was a double operation in the lathe, all right? Um, over here, you may be wondering, I was gonna cut some gears for this model, but I thought, uh, we had a really good 3D printer uh, at the TAFE. As you know, I was teaching apprentices for about two years at the TAFE. Uh, I've since gone back to the high school system, um, mainly due to money and more holidays in the high school system than in the, than in the TAFE system. So, yeah, when you count apples for apples, well, you look into it and you'll see why. So, before I left the TAFE, I 3D printed these on the Mark Forge out of... Um, I believe it's some sort of ABS or nylon. It's quite tough stuff. I'm gonna give that a crack. And now if these gears fail, well, I could always 3D print another one. I'll just cut a set manually, all right? Rightio, that concludes the video today. I really appreciate you uh, checking out my little Aaron Engineering channel and following along. And if you made it this far, thank you. Now, what I'm going to do with these bases, now you may be wondering, you can see here that the motor's gonna tip over, all right? So I've still got all this cast uh, swarf from when I machine these and they're sitting in a clean bucket. I bought some clear casting resin. I'm going to bung up the ends and fill up this up with uh, mix uh, the cast swarf with the clear casting resin and hopefully that will give it a bit of weight in the base uh, and may just help to absorb a bit of uh, vibration and stuff like that. So look it's uh, I've never done it before so watch this space and I'll see how I go. Rightio, look, thanks for following on. Uh, if you could give the video a like or a comment, I'd appreciate it. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.